Hello. I'm sorry for the one minute lateness, but uh, it was one of my <laughs> uh, ditzy moments because I just kept waiting for the thing to come up in YouTube and it wasn't and it wasn't and I reloaded the page and I reloaded the page and then I reloaded the page some more and what happened actually was that in order to to stream I have to tell my uh, OBS to start streaming and I did tell it to start streaming but I switched windows too fast and I didn't answer to the are you sure you want to start streaming because generally speaking you click on the button to start streaming hoping that maybe santa's gonna come or something <laughs> uh so anyway uh hi renea hi ellen hi jessica hi elaine hi sharon uh what i thought of uh, doing i didn't want to go with uh, something that would take too long but still uh, give you a few good tips and stuff and it's basically about Mokume Gane and uh, if you watched my uh, playlist about Mokume Gane <laughs> hi Judy um, not actually I can uh, let me get it up for you because I have a full playlist with everything it's called Mokumegane Technique Made Easy, where I explain a whole bunch of stuff. Let me just a second. So it starts, this is the first one, and then... Uh, hold on. Let me give you the link to the list, not to the single video. <laughs> And uh, I explain in that little list uh, the history of how Mokumegane came to be and all that. Uh, hi, Beth. Hi, Judith. Hi, Karen. Uh, but uh, there, are, of course, I didn't cover everything that is to be about Mokumegane. And, but I did touch the um, stamped Mokumegane. And uh, there's a few little tricks when it comes to the stamped Mokumegane. And that is your best bet is to... Is normally with the Mokumegane we just put several sheets of various colors. And then we uh, pass over and we thin them out and we stack and we thin them out. Thin them out and we stack and then we start deforming it with various implements. Uh, now, that would be a random Mokumegane. When you're doing a and Mokumegane by its nature is fairly random, but um, when you're doing, I mean, there are certain effects depending on how you, what kind of deforming stuff you uh, use. High space oddity. Um, you can obtain the same type of patterns but when it comes to the stamped and even molded mokumegane and i will show you both uh, things your best bet if you want to do better controlled design you do not go with just uh, sheets of stacked and stacked and uh, Hi Chris, hi Krista. I'm fairly good today, thank you. So if you want to get a specific pattern and a specific type of uh, color combination, again, you do not go with sheets and sheets of various colors, just stacked one on top of the other. Um, and I'm actually getting because I thought this this is fairly deep and should be, this is one of the liquid clay um, um, textures and I'll show you how to do that uh, you can do that with certain molds as well hello so uh, <laughs> yeah Faye <laughs> I know I get it uh, so your best bet you have to think about it and i chose uh souffle 
Now, remember, there's one basic thing about Mokumegane. If you want a good Mokumegane, you need a soft clay. You will not get the same type of Mokumegane using a firm clay as you would use as when you're using a soft clay. So if you're using Primo Souffle Cernet, it's going to look uh, different than if you use uh, Pardo or uh, Fimo or Keto. And why is that? Because the soft clays are more elastic. So when you press, uh, let's say that you press the, the end of a paintbrush handle, right? When you press it, it is a soft clay. It will pull the clay in so that when you're cutting, you're going to get all kinds of in-between and gradients, especially if your um, layers of clay are very thin. But when you're doing that on a firm clay, there will be no pulling. Hi, Donna. There will be no pulling, so you'll get much clearer um, edges on your pattern. Okay, so uh, let's go to it. That's why I chose the souffle because it is a soft clay. And the more you condition and the softer your clay is, the more you'll get those very fine and delicate gradients. But that's essentially not uh, all that I wanted to show you today. I just want to explain to you how to get a controlled design. Now, I have here, and I actually have to look up to tell you exactly what colors these are. I know that this is pumpkin. Give me just a second to look for the, for what color this is. Because, got be souffle. Alrighty. No, this is actually mandarin. It's not pumpkin. It's one of the new ones. And this is raspberry. Okay, so mandarin, raspberry, and white. And I'm going to add just a touch of black. Uh, this is primo because, I don't know, I'm either out of black souffle or it's all the way in the closet where I keep the most of the clay. And I don't want to go in there. <coughs> Thank you, Krista. So, let's get to how can we arrange this so that we would get a specific type of pattern with these. Let me see. If I want the middle of the flower to be the mandarin, and then I want the edges to be the raspberry and then I want I'm going to want to kind of um, underline all the designs and have it have everything on white and I'm going to do two combinations so you can see the the difference so let me grab I didn't bring my notepad you know how I like to write Okay, so I'm going to grab some mandarin. I'm going to grab some raspberry. I'm going to grab some white. And a touch of black. Okay, so I said the white will be the base. So with it being the base, remember that when you cut, so when the clay goes in here and you cut, 
you will have whatever is not pushed in will be the background so my back background will be the white right then I said that I want it to be very slightly contoured so this will come under my design <clears throat> I said that I want the mandarin orange to be the center so this will be the first because it will be the one pushed through everything will be cut to reveal the center and then with some raspberry contour enhanced by the black now first I'm going to get everything on a thicker setting Now, obviously, this will be my, you kind of have to think backwards, okay? Thank you, Cindy. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about Whisper until for at least for another week, probably on the monthly chat for September. I'm going to talk about him. I don't want to talk about him right now. Okay, so this will be my center. Now, if I want my center to be slightly um, contoured with the raspberry, I want that raspberry to be on a very, very thin uh, setting on the pasta machine. So I'm going to go s at about like maybe a s eight on the makings that is... No, it doesn't if you use the proper um, blade. I'll talk about this in a minute. So, I'm going to thin out the raspberry. And this is on an eight. And then I need this to be even thinner contoured with blacks, but this is going to be super thin. So the thinnest on my pasta machine, which will be a nine. And the same for the white. It's very important to have a proper blade when you're doing mokumegane. And the best blades that I have found to date are these, uh, they're called Jili, that's the brand. And you can find them at uh, both on Amazon, but on Amazon you're gonna have to wait quite a bit. Uh, there's in my Amazon influencer store, there's a section called blade and it's the very last uh, blade there but you can also get them uh, at polyclay play and let me finish cutting here and i will post the links okay so i have my mandarin on the thickest setting and i place it on the so this will be the first contour then the second contour and that's why I said you have to be very careful and think backwards because that's how it's going to end up backwards hi Cecile and 
then I'm going to place everything. Make sure you don't get. Where did I get this? On white. But honestly, out of all the clays, the Primo and the Cernit uh, do the best gradient -y Mokumeganes. And the Pardo does the best um, clear lines Mokumeganes. And when you're doing a Mokumegane, a stamped Mokumegane, it's going to be as I said, different than when you're doing the random uh, pattern. Clean. The black always messes up. Okay, so I have my little stack and what I'm going to do first, I'm going to pass it through the pasta machine, the whole stack on the thickest setting that will thin out even more my little very thin sheets so now i have very 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 thin sheets but in order to be able to get this kind of stuff you're going to need a very very deep uh stamp or texture now I hope this one is deep enough and actually I'm going to try to get it through the pasta machine with so you always put the background towards the texture I'm going to try and pass it through the machine with the thing on it works with the making textures so let's hope I'm not gonna break anything <laughs> never did that this with this kind of it worked and it worked pretty good let's see if it's deep enough and let me focus this hi Bertie let's zoom this in so you can see better what I'm doing and make sure that the focus is perfect okay so first of all you want to make sure that your thing is well stuck to the to your tile and then um, if you got your blade from Trish you know that it comes the set is with a long blade and with a short blade the short blade is perfect for cutting very thin cane slices the long blade is perfect for doing shaving mica shift or uh, mokumegane or cutting mokumegane slices but the stamped mokumegane as technique of shaving is more related to the mica shift than to the actual mokumegane let me get these out of the way and first of all one of the things that will make your blade not stick is wipe it with some armor roll if you don't have armor roll then you can use some water but i can tell you that this is the the armor roll that you're supposed to use and i've had this for close to three years and it's almost still half full i personally prefer not to use water because it can trap little air bubbles well droplets and when those when you bake they can start evaporating and cause bubbles and I don't like to use talcum powder because to me it changes the texture so I always use armor roll all right the other thing that you need to be very careful and check is the edge of the blade it sometimes can have as you just keep putting it in and out of whatever you're holding it in it can get nicked and 
On the Mokumegane is not as important, but it is very important on the mica shift because it's going to leave streaks. And let me actually re set the focus to show you what I'm talking about, talk, talking about, and I'll reset it back. Okay. Okay, so you can see the nick. This little nick, so this is an older blade, but these are very, very fine, very thin. Um, so they will get nicked very easily, especially as they bump into other blades in whatever you're holding them in. This one, as you can see, doesn't have any nicks. And this one doesn't either. I actually should just throw away that other one. Okay, now let's get back to the focus we had before. Okay, and keep, so put some armor roll on a paper towel and keep it with you because you'll have to uh, get back on cleaning the blade every few, so many uh, shavings. And I do not advise you to bend the blade like this because you cannot always control how deep it goes and this type of mokumegane is a matter of precision exactly as I said pretty much like uh, the mica shift shaving so you don't want to get too deep so you very slightly bend it most of the time I just go like this See, I'm fixing the blade. The blade will, is not uh, sharp enough to cut my finger, but as this is the tile, I fix it like this, and it makes me not change the depth. But if you cannot do this, then by all means, gently, very gently bend it. Don't go too deep, because you're going to gouge. And then start shaving. And it will go deeper than the, the very top. But this is why I was saying that this is a pretty much a precision shaving. And you will get... Uh, all these beautiful, beautiful effects. Okay, I'm gouging on the left. Sorry. Let me just get out of here. I messed up here. Because I have to do, look at three things at the same time four things sometimes my left my right if it's on the camera and the chat so as I said don't try to do it from to start with from the very start just keep gently gently shaving at the same depth and from time to time Stop and re-wipe the blade with, and don't wipe on the w with the uh, sharp side. Wipe with the dull side against the, because you're going to blunt your blade if you wipe with the sharp side in. And how do you know that you can go deeper? It's very simple. You just uh, you just go like this, and you'll feel if you have any irregularities. 
and I'll do as I said I'm going to do several combinations so you can see why it ma matters the why the thickness respectively thinness of your sheets when you're doing a stamped mokumegane why it matters so much And as you can see where the mandarin and the raspberry meet, as well as where the black meets the white, you get a beautiful gradienty shadowy effect. But you keep your background as you want it your best bet is to have a texture that you can get through the pasta machine with because that will ensure that you will get the same thickness all over and it will be much easier to um, work with now another tip if you want to get some a second uh, use of this you use exactly with the shavings just get a let me get this and i'll show you let me get this on a you just get the shavings and you put them upside down on a on a background okay this one is not very good to put upside down only when you get the to the deeper colors see you get like a lacy thing but yes, it's a it's a double use pretty much. Mokumegane. Okay, it sticks. So it started sticking more on the wall. Yeah, this thing kind of looks a little bit like a dragon. So again, you don't want to go too deep, because if you go too deep, you'll meet only the mandarin orange. You want to be able to keep the, the design. And obviously here, I need to get a little bit deeper because I don't have any uh, blacks uh, any of the color underneath and again but this can uh, be a good thing because you can choose what colors you want to show you can choose to show only the black and then only from time to time show the color underneath as well And again, you can feel where you can insist. But very careful, again, do not bend the blade too much. Because if you do, you're going to gouge. And it's going to just go all the way through the... bottom color it is a bit meticulous but the results are worth it also remember that if you cannot do it this way you can always put because I show in one of the 
Mok Megane things I show how to do that uh, how to do this using a jar if you have issues with your hands that don't allow you to control the depth very well you can just place this on a jar and then just go kind of like you know like you shave a potato or a carrot And as you can see, I'm getting all those pretty lace-like things. I want now a little bit more color right here. So let me see if I don't blunder. It's just like one twentieth of a millimeter that I need to go in. well I want that because I don't have the lines very correct here and see how I'm bringing out and you have like a sh shadow here because it's the black under the white that's going to come out okay and I think that I'm pretty good right now so let me grab my then your next thing and another another thing if you really really cannot do it but you have the sanding um, wand you know that changed adapted pedicure wand don't even bother bake it and then just sand it down this is how we used to uh, do it in the very beginning back in the 80s when there weren't so many nifty uh, shaving blades and all that it was simply for mica shift and for uh, mokumegane it was sanded down and by the way as a little tip if you want your mica shift to look the best after you shave it after you uh, burnish it after you bake it sand it down a little bit it's going to bring up even richer uh, mica shift stuff okay then very important when doing this is to burnish it because with burnishing you you kill two why didn't I put my ticker up there we go my ticker okay Yeah, I know. I said that I will put the the link when I'm done with this. I cannot keep moving back and forth the keyboard. Okay, so you use wax paper. If you have the wax paper that only has wax on one side, make sure you put the waxed side on the piece. And uh, again, because I started to tell you, uh, it's got two actually two uses when you do this number one it's going to get your piece uh, very flat and very nice so you won't have to do a lot of sanding sometimes you won't even have to do any sanding at all especially if you want to varnish and number two is that by not having to do a lot of sanding you will not change the pattern that you already have because as you sand in if it's not very even you're going to start going too deep and lose your pattern get something else so your first thing is your finger you just go 
never use a roller ever i mean never use a roller to do this actually let me get this up a little bit because we don't need the zoom right now okay so first you burnish burnish with your finger and you can feel the tiny differences in level and the, the wax paper is going to help you because you can very easily see where it doesn't touch the clay because it's going to be a little bit lighter you're going to see that there's air between the wax paper and the clay underneath and from time to time lift it and place it again and go again just gently 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 burnish with your finger your next thing is to get if you have an acrylic block to finish it uh, better hi Robbie get your acrylic block and I have a smaller one somewhere here but I have no idea where it is I didn't get to the craft room yet and then just press and burnish with it if you have the acrylic block because what happens when you do the burnishing the clay that's still a little bit up is going to get pressed down and you will keep your pattern whatever pattern you have it's going to be kept now if you do not have an acrylic block or you just simply want to see I still have a little line here where where I told you that I gouged I wasn't watching my left hand and as I said don't if you're going to roll you're going to uh, distort because obviously the clay is going to go but what you do you rub again you rub 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 because what you're doing the burnishing is pushing the clay down not making it the clay even by uh, expanding it but that's why I said your best bet is the acrylic block because you can press the clay down much better and you can still feel how it came up I still have a very very slight and at the very very last moment especially if you have a very stubborn part you can do just a pinch of rolling just to get rid of whatever sp stubborn spot you have but right now I have my piece nice and very nice and even as you can see it's all nice and shiny and there's no absolutely no um, nick on it it's just perfect to do something with it now let's see what happens if we switch the colors around and uh, we change even more the thickness of those contours and this time what I'm going to do <coughs> I'm going to do the inside white so let me grab some white and I'm going to get it on the and I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller so there won't be so much uh, you waiting for me to finish shaving mm -hmm. 
so the same as last time it was the mandarin that was the the center thank you so much donna yay don't forget to sum me up uh and i think i need a little bit more black let me see Nope, just a second, let me grab a piece of black. Goodness gracious, where is my black? I think I need to open another package. Yeah, this is like just uh, oh, there it is the black. And then grab a little a slice of black. because I need it in very 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 thin okay so this will be the center and let's say the contour will be the orange mandarin more than this by the way do you want more ones because I just got a I just got some new crystal points and then we are going to make the background fuchsia so Orange man mandarin will be the first contour, black the second contour, and the background this time will be the not fuchsia, it's raspberry. All right. Only that now I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to make the. Uh, contours a little bit even thinner than they were so first let me get this on a thin setting again it's going to be like an 8 And then I'm going to do the same thing with the mandarin. And because I don't need this much. So I'm going to go about, let me see. By width. And then I'm going to get with both of these once again on the eighth. Okay, so make sure I don't have any, any a little, not to call it, uh, air bubbles. then my background as i said is going to be the raspberry so i'm getting the raspberry on an eight okay 
And actually, let me get the raspberry on a nine. That will be the thinnest of all. Once again, so this is the background. The raspberry is the background. By Cecile, right? Then I want my orange to be inside on the inside of the flower. So obviously, my black will be towards the background. As I said, I'm not going to make it as big as the other one. And then I'm going to have my white. That is the inside of the flower. And then I'm going to get this once again in the pasta machine on the thickest setting this whole sandwich because remember the white is on the thickest setting but I'm going to bring all of it on the thickest setting and then and if you don't want to have any issues you can place a little bit of and I guess I should have shown you how I did the Okay, I'm going like this and remember the makings has a slower function, so I'm going to go with the slow. And it actually came up pretty pretty big. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. First, make sure that this is well and nice stuck to the tile, and this is very important. And uh, let me zoom in, and you will see the difference of changing, uh, and not just in this case, not just the uh, color order in the stack, but also the thickness of it. Make sure that I have the best focus. Okay. And then the same as I did before, I'm going to shave until I get to the very middle. Hi, Joachim! Where's my... Where's my thingy? Here it is. And again. Making sure it's a good blade. Wipe the blade really, really good so it doesn't stick. And then shave. And of course you can use other colors. I just thought that uh, this would look very good because uh, your, your best bet is to choose you, you don't have to have two lines of contour you can have just one but your best bet is if you choose to have a color contour besides the black to choose the co a color that would be fairly close to the what's going to be the middle And of course you can use, see how I didn't get it properly on the, of course you can do the background, uh, background black, it looks beautiful when the background is black.
So this is what is called a controlled mokumegane. And one in which you can repeat the same effect over and over if you repeat the same conditions as in the thickness of the sheets as color combinations I would recommend you use uh, as the two colors you'll always pretty much it's a good idea to use both uh, black and white if you don't want to use white uh, absolutely use the black but as color combinations I would recommend you know like uh, let's say in Primo use the cobalt blue and the turquoise Kinda, but it's like a satin slice with a lot more color combinations, a lot more effects. And it's not raised. It's completely flat. But as I said, you obtain your your whole thing is to figure out how you want to place the colors. If you're not sure, just make a small spot, make a tiny tiny stack, and see how it looks. And just keep uh, changing the colors between them to see which of the color combinations you find the best now as I was saying if you make the contours even thinner you will uncover more of the middle you can go even thinner than that I do I would not recommend out to get uh, much of the background thinned out because you're gonna start seeing the color underneath and think that souffle is a fairly opaque clay and you still there's areas where you can see that under this raspberry there's black and again you can go as you can go a little bit deeper but don't go too deep because you're going to get past the uh, contours and show only the inside see like here I shaved the contours and now there's only the flower but you want if you want to do that you can do that just for uh, the variation and once again what you need to do once you're done is simply uh, what I can tell you can you do if you want to do this with um, mica clays be very very careful because um, you're going to get areas where the mica shift is going to hide your pattern and make it not very noticeable so what I suggest you do is to mix a little bit of regular clay in that mica clay like for example mix a little bit of white in the uh, white pearl uh, a little bit of pomegranate I'm, and I'm talking about the uh, primo right a little bit of pomegranate if you want to use magenta pearl uh, because that when but don't use granite or anything in the black leave the black the black don't put any mica stuff in it because uh, you're going to lose all the contouring if you do that uh, and you can do this just plain with black and white honestly depending on what you want to come out with you do the background the thin background black and the uh, inside white and you'll get 
white lace on a black background you can do the background white and the lace inside black and you'll get a black lace on white background or on cherry red background so it all depends only that as i said make sure that you figure out um how to think backwards on how the the layers are set and what's going to show up and what isn't let me get this back where's the other so as you can see it depends a lot on how you get your slices and how you uh let me re unzoom just a second how you set the slices and how you shave because as you can see on this one i didn't go very deep and because of the way that the contours were uh, on this one I went deeper and the contours were much thinner so it was much easier to go through than it was through this one and I have a much nicer uh, lace like thing than I have here so it's entirely up to you what you choose okay so I will see you next uh, Sunday yes start looking because i think i'm going to be able to uh to look um to work on uh, tutorials and the next chat with you the monthly chat with you will be practically in two weeks it's going to be on september the 4th but uh, i don't know yet what we're gonna do next sunday we're gonna do something i promise we're gonna do something and don't forget that uh it may be this week but definitely next week we're gonna start doing some halloween things and then maybe some uh, thanksgiving and i know everybody wants cane and i promise you we will do uh, some halloween canes not on the live but as uploaded already made tutorials okay thank you so much oh uh, hold on hold on i said that i was going to give you the link to the polyclay play give me just a minute So, um, it, it's super cheap, this blade over at Trish, um, and it comes with the 8 inch blade and with the 4 inch blade and they are in a, in a case and this is the best blade to cut if you cannot afford or if you don't like a, a cane slicer this is the best thing to use for uh, cutting very thin uh, cane slices okay thank you so much don't forget to thumb up and if you just found my channel subscribe i've just had a lot of issues and hopefully now with stuff being gone and resolved i'll get back on track Thank you, and we'll, you'll see more tutorials very soon. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful end of the week. And a good Monday, too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>